everybody it's Allie and welcome to our Y&R chat for Sunday July 21st 2024 Ooh, Chelsea almost gave into the guilt <laughs> and she almost told Billy that she had a one-night stand with Adam <sighs> this is great <laughs> our chatters say no Chelsea don't do it I am surprised 79% of you say don't do it Chelsea don't you dare tell the truth and I agree <laughs> I have to say I agree confessing may very well ease your guilty conscience but then it just dumps the pain on to Billy and Sally and maybe it's wrong to keep the truth maybe it's right I don't know but it was painful to see Chelsea looking at Billy with her big tear filled eyes he's reassuring her that she you know she he he he's wanting to be with her that he was wanting to support her she's saying uh you've done nothing but be there for me billy he's saying i don't think i've done enough and the secret is just right on the tip of her tongue <laughs> I knew it wasn't going to happen though. <laughs> and do you want to know why? Because that's the soap opera way. <laughs> you got to tease the viewers for at least a little while before the secret comes out. And who knows? Maybe they'll twist it. Maybe Adam will end up being the one to confess it because he's seeming very cool about it all. He's seeming like he's capable of just moving on so that could be the twist that he's the one that breaks I don't know all I know is that the truth will come out sooner or later now Adam's life has definitely taken a sharp turn this week and it's funny because aside from the issues with his son that he can't control um Adam's personal life has been going pretty great. He finally reconciled with Sally. They moved in together. He was working well with Nick. And he was in a period of relative peace with Victor. And then it just feels like everything in his life blew up. And I guess that's also the soap opera way. Get your life right where you want it and then blow it up. The fling I can mostly chalk up to one bad moment of, of, of bad decision making on both Adam and Chelsea's part collectively, but Adam agreeing to take the Newman Media job, fooling himself into thinking that he's the one in control, well that just seems foolish to me. I, I think that Adam is under the false impression that he is going to be able to protect Jack from Victor, which is admirable, but Adam should know that, you know, he's not going to be able to control this situation, even though Victor has agreed that Adam can go ahead and, and run Newman Media um, without directly attacking Jack. He just needs to pump up glissade at Newman Media. He doesn't have to specifically target Jack. Adam should know that that is not going to last. If Victor was totally okay with everyone playing by the rules at Newman Media, then he would have just let Nikki and Victoria run it. And that's not what he did. Victor has a plan, and it's going to end up coming back on Adam some way, somehow, like it always does. I feel like he just stepped right into a fire. Adam just stepped right into a fire, and he's going to get burnt. 
Nobody except Victor wants him at Newman Media. Victor was saying early in the week that it was a temporary position just until Nikki gets back, but then in the previews for Monday, Victor is saying that he's in the process of acquiring a company that is as big as Newman Enterprises. What? There's a company that is as big as Newman Enterprises? I'm surprised you would admit that. <laughs> I love that line. I can't wait to see it again. <laughs> oh, I, I mean, I to buy a company that's as big as your current company, that has to cost uh, a lot of money. And so I guess that's a sign of how much Victor really does want revenge on Jack, which is a red flag when it comes to Adam's control of Newman Media. Uh, but Nikki's not just going to take this new company and run it. I mean, I think Nikki wants Newman Media, and I think Nikki fully intends to take it back over. Not even, even if just, sure, she probably wants it, but more so because she doesn't want Adam to have it. <laughs> <laughs> but it seems like Adam is fully intending to keep it, keep it. He wants to keep Newman Media and fight for it. And that I love. That I love. Nikki and Adam having their own story, their own conflict, or, or working together, conflict or working together, either way, that would be crazy entertaining to me. Of course, I am still boosting for my storyline idea that Nikki develops a low-key crush on Adam. Come on, you guys. Come on! We just need a couple of fantasy scenes. <laughs> just enough to shock the viewers. That's all. But I know it's not going to be happen happening because it would be too much fun. It's just too much fun. YNR won't do it. <laughs> Unless they do. Oh, but yeah, all in all, Okay, I think Victor um, uh, giving Adam the job and Adam taking it's a bad move by Adam for Adam. And I was glad that Sally tried to tell him that. I 100% agreed with everything that Sally said to Adam, which was essentially, why would you agree to this? You should know by now that things will never be any different than they already are. And then she even made this really great point that he should try to have the father-son relationship with Victor that he would promote for his own relationship with Connor, and that's not just placate the old man and work around him. That was so smart of Sally. She's so good for him in that way. And it's a shame that this is definitely going to be putting a strain on Adam and Sally's relationship because they're not going to be seeing eye to eye on any of this. They're already arguing about it on day one. He even walked out on their argument about it, which I thought was super rude and immature and unlike Adam. She came to, all the way down to Newman Media to make it right with him when she didn't have to. And if I were her, I wouldn't have. Sorry. Walk out on me and I'm not going to be tracking you down. But she did, and they made up, but she also made it clear to him that she's skeptical about all of this, and that she cares about his well-being, and that if she has an opinion, then she's going to say it, which is exactly what she should do and what he should want her to do. Isn't that what he should want in a partner? I mean, why even be with her if he is not going to take her opinion into consideration. It just seems like it's all about Adam and Chelsea now. Like, Chelsea's the one who understands him. He's got Chelsea now to lean on. Chelsea to support whatever decision it is that he needs to make to get through the, the stuff that's going on with Connor, specifically, which we all know is not going to be too much trouble for too much longer. I mean, the damage is done when it comes to Connor. Just forget about it. It's all over. Q Connor skipping back into town now on a rainbow. How dare you, Phyllis? Talking to Faith like she's a human being? Don't you ever do that again. <laughs> I think 
think Sharon should have stood up and flipped the table and then walked right out of there. Wait, is that too much? Do you think I'm overreacting? I don't know. I'm, I'm sorry. My doctor switched my meds and, and now I'm feeling a little off. <laughs> Oh, it's not funny, though. It's not funny. Sharon lying on the couch with a wad of Kleenexes and dirty takeout containers on the coffee table in front of her. Ugh. And as if that wasn't dark enough, this week she actually saw an apparition of Cassie which I'm not gonna lie, was pretty good from a viewer perspective because it was actual old footage of Cameron Grimes superimposed into the scene just probably before Cassie died or maybe right after, maybe one of the ghost appearances. I'm not exactly sure where that piece came from, but it was good that they would grab that, superimpose it as a, as a apparition. So good. And then, oh, Sharon in her cute country kitchen that I love. Uh, also hearing Cassie crying out, Mom! <sighs> Honestly, if it, it all feels very real to me. I'm like, I buy it. I buy it all completely. Wherever Sharon is right now, I buy it 100% because I am sure, meds or no meds, that that kind of trauma the trauma of losing your child never goes away. It has got to always just be there right below the surface. And it really would not take much to catapult you right back into it. It doesn't matter how much time has passed. The feelings are the same. And oh my gosh, oh, the flashback scene of Sharon throwing herself on top of Cassie's casket that was so powerful, so powerful. And I don't even think we have seen that since the day it aired. I screen capped it. You got to go back to yrchat.com and look at it because, man. Mariah and Tessa and Nick all stopped by Sharon's house this week because they're worried about her. And Sharon was insisting that she was fine all the while her eyes are swollen with tears. Ugh, it's heartbreaking. It really is. And I just keep wondering how exactly Lucy is going to fit into all of this because Lucy is right at the same age, right at the same stage that Cassie was in when Cassie died. Wanting to impress the older girl Faith um, wanting to fit in with her friends, um, asking to stay home from the trip to Portugal with Daniel and Heather because her social life is the most important thing to her. Mm. Daniel and Heather have also decided to stay home because Paul says it is just too hot in Portugal. You just Stay in Genoa City, you guys. Don't come here. It's too hot. <laughs> that sounds like Paul. I don't even know this off-screen Paul anymore. I can't even imagine him. What have they done to Paul? Yeah, I, I don't know. I was thinking that Lucy was going to ask Daniel about Cassie's death this week. And instead, she hasn't brought it up, and she seems to just be walking the exact same path. And I really hope that somebody stops her before it's too late. I was really thinking that Lucy would end up crossing paths with Katie, because they're about the same age. But Lucy, there's this ominousness about it. I don't know, you probably feel it that way too. Katie's story, on the other hand, is seeming a little bit more one-dimensional. It's mostly just about Claire. Like, Katie's hot and cold when it comes to Claire. She loves Claire, she hates Claire, she resents Claire, she wants to be with Claire. Each scene is a little bit different each time. <coughs> I was 
very surprised that after they were arm in arm in the park, Katie this week was right back to being rude to Claire, hating Claire, and also being super rude to Cole, which I didn't care for. But then Claire played her cards just right and asked Katie for some advice on how she can get Victoria to back off of the momming, essentially saying, it's not me who's monopolizing your mom. It's our mom who's helicoptering. And oh boy, don't you know a lot about that? What can I do? Maybe you could give me some advice. I thought that whole thing came off as kind of condescending toward Katie. Uh, but it worked. Katie turned right around and next thing you know, they're all out to dinner together. Katie won't even go to dinner without Claire. I guess that Claire just has a way with kids. Claire has less romantic experience than Katie. Claire is a virgin, y'all. <laughs> That's the subtext. A virgin. That's just what Kyle likes, by the way. So he's got another virgin, just like Lola. And I'm sure that Claire is going to lose her virginity to Kyle in Paris. That's the other subtext. <laughs> Kyle is like... The Virgin Whisperer. <laughs> what is it about him? <laughs> I can see it now. <laughs> the Virgin Whisperer. Mm. <laughs> well, just to spite Summer, Kyle came up with the idea to take Claire and Harrison to Paris with him on a business trip. But Claire is hesitant. <laughs> I, she, I couldn't help but notice that she hit a really great milestone this week. Sending Harrison off to the kitchen to get some of Mrs. Martinez's uh, snickerdoodles while the adults were talking. Uh, see, I think that's great. Even the nanny gets to send the kid off screen to the kitchen to get some cookies when there's a love story brewing and she's in it. Good for Claire. <laughs> she's graduated. <laughs> oh. But Claire is confused, you know. She had this great mother-daughter moment with Victoria this week talking about it all, saying that she's not sure if she has feelings for Kyle because she has no experience with romance. And even if she was having romantic feelings for Kyle, he's her employer, so it's complicated. I actually really love Claire and Kyle. I'm getting into it. I think they're really cute together, and I'm anticipating the hookup. And I also just really like, I'm into, the, I'm into the whole, like, wealthy businessman falls in love with the nanny thing. Uh, but then again, Claire's not just a nanny, right? She's a Newman, so she's, she's got the pedigree. <laughs> uh, Kyle confronted Victor this week about why it was such a problem for him to be hanging out with Claire. And Victor chalked it up to, no, it's not that I don't trust you. It's just that Claire is very naive. And I don't know. I, I, I like Claire. But I do have a hard time believing that she's really that naive. She has a college education. She's been out in the world. She had enough savvy to infiltrate Newman Enterprises and lure Nikki to Aunt Jordan's cabin for an IV of vodka on the rocks, but naive? Mm. Okay. Claire's naivete is probably meant more to contrast her to Summer, right? Claire's supposed to be icky, sticky, sweet, naive. 
to make uh, summer, you know, more fierce, right? Um, summer's not happy about the trip to Paris. Uh, summer recently filed for full custody of Harrison. I don't understand why it has to be full custody. If there's a divorce, doesn't, you know, don't both parents have rights? It doesn't have to be one parent or the other, right? Can't a judge grant shared custody? Like, they both have equal custody, but then we have a, a visitation arrangement that must be followed to make sure that it's fair. I don't know. I've never been there before. Uh, maybe if you have ever had a, a child custody uh, arran legal arrangement, you could let me know. Um, it just seems to, to the solution to me would just be to split it half and half. <sighs> oh, Lord. Phyllis is advising Summer on how to proceed. <laughs> now that the lawyers are involved, uh, Phyllis says, okay, let me help you, baby girl, super girl. Uh, but I have to say, I completely disagreed with Phyllis's perspective on this situation. Phyllis said, Claire, forget Claire. Harrison is going to be over Claire the moment that he goes back to school. Audra is the one who you have to look out for. Well, when did Phyllis develop such a bad opinion of Audra? I don't really even remember Phyllis and Audra crossing paths. And if they did, part of me thinks they would probably be really good friends. So I don't know. It's out of the blue to me. And, and, and besides that, Audra's Kyla's business partner. He's not involved with her personally. And even if he was involved with her personally, so what? That's his choice. How does it really affect Harrison? What is Audra going to do? Offer the kid a poison apple? I don't think so. I don't see the problem. But then again, of course, Phyllis only knows that uh, Kyle slept with Audra right as Summer and Kyle were breaking up. And Phyllis doesn't have the benefit of our bird's eye view. She doesn't know that Kyle and Audra are being forced to work together by Victor. So Phyllis has formed her opinion and now she is forcing that opinion on Summer. And she's getting Summer all ramped up for a war. Not just with Kyle, but with Audra too. I don't know. I was really glad that Nick was there this week to inject some de-escalation juice into the whole situation. Because Phyllis runs hot. You know, and Nick is there to help her turn down the heat. And not just Phyllis, but Summer too. He's He called himself the keep the peace guy. <laughs> and I like that. And I like, I think he's playing that role really well. Um, I also really agreed with Jack and Diane's conclusion that they come, came to terms with this week regarding their son, which was, okay, we can't control Kyle's decision making. So we are just going to have to wish him well and let him work it out. Which of course is way less dramatic, but much more reasonable, you know? They're, they, they're taking the reasonable approach, but I'm sure that won't last long. I'm sure we're going to see exactly how reasonable Jack Abbott is once the mud starts slinging and he realizes that it's his son who's slinging it. Prepare to be wowed. Oh, it was Kyle who said that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Kyle was on the phone with some reporters about Glissade, and he said, prepare to be wowed. I don't know. It was a cute, it was just a funny moment have, coming out of Kyle's mouth. It must have been very hard because not very many of you guessed it. So extra good job, Marianne B., Dolores, Ron, Brittany, Henry, Justin, Daisy, and Lynn. Good job. Thumbs up. Let's see about this one. Who said this? In real life, there are no rules. Who would have said that? In real life, there are no rules. Hmm. If you think you know, go to yrchat.com to leave your guess. And if you get it right, then I will give you your shout out during next week's YNR Chat. Before I get to comments, 
I have to give a big, beautiful birthday shout out to Victoria, whose birthday is today. Boom, 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 fireworks. <laughs> wow, I actually get to wish someone a happy birthday on their birthday. Oh, Victoria. I hope that this adds to your beautiful birthday and that you have a, just a, a wonderful celebration. Congratulations. Also, if you can believe it, two birthdays this week, Marianne V. Your birthday is 727, so that's uh, later in the week, right? Is that next Saturday? Is that right? Next Saturday? Oh, Congratulations to you, too. I hope you have a beautiful birthday. And in fact, Mary Ann I'm going to start with your comment uh, as part of the birthday celebration here. Um, well, I had asked you guys last week about the, you know, do you want Adam and Chelsea to confess? So, like I said, 79% said no, uh, which included Mary Ann V, who says, I voted no because I don't think it's necessary to involve Sally and Billy. They will eventually find out, and I'm sure, but no need to cause them the heartache if it will be the only time. They were drinking and were upset about Connor. It was bound to happen being so close and upset. <laughs> I love that. I, I love that. Well, when you're drinking and you're so close and you're upset, sex happens. <laughs> it was bound to happen. <laughs> <laughs> Only in so sometimes in reality. Oh, that's funny. Uh, but no, I totally agree with you. Uh, I say, you know what, if it's one time thing, maybe we can just sweep that one under the rug. But Sue W says, well, they should confess honesty and no secrets and blah, 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 and all that. Tis the honorable thing after you've, oopsie, sullied what you stand for. Oof. But... I understand both Adam and Chelsea's POV and hiding it. It'll wreak havoc with Billy and Sally, for sure. I think Sally's trust in Adam that she struggled so long to grow again will be forever shattered. Me thinks they're done. But that's the thing. We know the truth is going to come out. And I agree with you, Sue W. I don't think Sally will forgive him. I don't think she will forgive and forget. I think she will be done, done, done. And it'll be right back to Adam and Chelsea. Well, Naomi says Adam and Chelsea just fit together better than Adam and Sally. Cl Chelsea has a classy style about her. Sally is so trendy or slightly trashy that Nick is somehow a better offset, in my opinion. Nick is like a comfortable pair of shoes. Adam is like the cute shoes that you only wear when you don't have to walk too much. Sally is so very high profile with her hair and clothes that Adam and his Prince of Darkness vibe is too much for them as a couple. I'm just talking about style, but actually also personality. Sally is intense. Everything is a big and complex thing. That's just too much intensity to mix with Adam for any length of time. Well, maybe that's why they haven't been able to make it work. Maybe it's just too much intensity between them and the real balance is uh, with Chelsea's more uh, subdued style. That's a good point. Well, Sue W. says, if Y&R is going to definitively dwindle away, what could have been Adam and Sally? I worry there'll be not much left for the Sally character as her stories are rather aimless without the Adam hook. I like the actress very much and hope her character gets a whole new meaty story sans any Adam connection. I'm worried Sally Spectra is headed to supporting Oblivion. You know what, Sue W? I feel exactly the same way about Audra. Last week, Audra had the gorgeous sunset speech slash sex with Nate, but you know, how many times can you do that? With no forward momentum, you know, there's just nowhere to go. I, I think it's the same thing for Sally. I think, and Sally's probably in a worse position. No forward momentum after Adam breaks up. They got jobs, but mm, then what? Well, Connie says, hmm, I love Nikki. And she's my favorite woman character on the show. But I was put out with her today. She is clearly mad at Victor for taking it out by being, but clearly mad at Victor and taking it out by being rude to Sally 
openly hostile to Adam and not one word of concern for Connor. For once, Adam was not scheming or plotting. He was doing the same bidding as Victoria and Nick, yet he gets no credit for being cooperative with his siblings or taking on any additional responsibilities with a child in the hospital. Connie, yeah, Nikki didn't even mention Connor. He don't give a crap. <laughs> She don't give a crap. Is it about Nikki? No, then she don't give a crap. <laughs> this is interesting. Carrie says, Adam tempers his words with Nikki and shows her the respect that she does not give him. She's still jealous of Hope's boy after all these years. You know, that, I, I love that, Gary, because I never really cued in on that, but I, you're absolutely right now that I think about it. Adam always tempers himself not to go overboard with Nikki but Nikki never tempers herself when it comes to Adam and you're right she's been jealous she of uh, hopes child that Victor had a hope of child with hope for all these years and it never went away completely agree well Dolores says after my short hiatus from YNR chat during the past two weeks I was and still am disappointed again that the storyline has Adam as a foil. He again is unfaithful to Sally and will be a loser in this relationship after finally getting back together as a loving couple. I voted yes that Adam and Chelsea should confess because when, not if, the truth comes out, the blame will only settle on Adam because his character is always questioned, with many coming to the conclusion that he is bad and not open to human failures at times. Be honest now, Adam, and fall on your sword before Sally hoping she will under before Sally hoping and hoping that she will understand and forgive. Oh, be fall on your sword before Sally hoping she will understand and forgive. And while he is struggling with what's going on with Connor, his father Victor comes pressuring him to meet his demands. Victor shows no compassion for his son and his agonies, only reaching out to Adam when he wants something to meet his needs. Victor shows more understanding and love for his new granddaughter than he ever has, in my opinion, to his younger son. How sad. How sad. Yeah, um, well, first of all, Dolores, I think you're right. It's a disappointing turn for Adam's character. Um, on top of, like, the, you know, I know you were disappointed like I was about Tucker uh, leaving the show. So it's, like, two kind of disappointing -y things rolled into one. And I also, I love your point that it's, like, <laughs> Victor has way more compassion for Claire than he does for Adam. It definitely feels like Claire's history of doing some pretty bad stuff is is being washed away it's just certain characters get that they get that treatment where it's like yours yours is washed away and others are like no you're not it's always gonna haunt you Sherrod says okay so either the writers are losing their own story plot or once again Claire has slipped with her life and lies if I'm recalling correctly, Claire told Kyle that her Aunt Jordan never let her go anywhere, so it was difficult to make friends even when she went to college. So my question is, why does this woman have an updated passport? Most people don't even get a passport unless they plan to travel outside of their company, country. <laughs> company, country. Sherrod, I was thinking the exact same thing. Like, who has an unstamped current passport lying around just in case? <laughs> Something about that didn't ring true for me. Oh, but Henry says, great conversation between mother and daughter on Friday's episode about the birds and the bees. Clarison confesses that she's never had a romantic relationship. The V word was never even uttered. I thought the writers did a good job with the innuendo, if you will. Yes, Henry. I know. That's so interesting. Why did they choose to not have her say I guess because maybe you probably wouldn't say that about herself yourself. It was Claire telling her story. And I can imagine that if I was Claire sitting there talking, I probably wouldn't use the technical term. I'm a virgin. You know, she just, I would probably phrase it the way Claire did, too. And yeah, you're right. So that was a good way of, um, of kind of dancing around it a little bit, innuendo. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, 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 about the passport. I forgot this. Gary says, when you're basically living on the lamb with your crazy Aunt Jordan, even if you never go anywhere, your aunt sees that you are prepared. 
that with the passport. That's the only possible explanation about the passport, is that Aunt Jordan made her get it. Just in case they ever had to go on the lam. Okay, let's see. Well, Naomi says, I've said it before, but I can't help myself. I love the kids. I love Harrison. He's an adorably good little actor. Johnny is fantastic, and Katie is my new favorite kid. Thank you, YNR, for a nice expansion of the cast, even if only temporary during the summer. Yes, Naomi, we are getting what we asked for. I went to Soaps in Depth this week, too, and I saw there was a nice picture of the kids all together, all the kids in the cast currently, all together, Connor included. Uh, so I thought that was really nice. Um, also, Naomi says, I'm loving the sibling dynamics of Katie and Johnny. Katie is very realistic with her attitude, snipping at Johnny, and Johnny snatches the last bite of Katie's eclair. That was typical of older brothers. Claire was great with Katie one-on-one, -on -one, and Claire apparently takes night classes similar to the old Dale Carnegie courses on how to win friends and influence people. She is winning me over! <laughs> yeah, I Claire's winning me over too, and I agree. You know I love that. I think the dynamic between Katie and Johnny is super perfect of a older brother, younger sister. How about Johnny making that and making and winning that bet? Didn't you find that a little bit ironic? Has Billy's son? I did a little screen cap that I thought was pretty funny, but I thought it was funny that Johnny was like, "Okay, let me get, I'm getting a bet. Do you have any money?" No. I mean, and with Billy and his gambling addictions, it just seemed like this kid is Billy's son. Johnny is Billy's son. It's a perfect cast, and that actor is killing it. Oh, I hope he gets to stay around past summer. I think he's really fun. Oh, okay. Robin says, I think Claire is getting a little annoying with her interactions with Harrison. Too overboard goody-goody. I can see why Summer's jealous. Harrison is a little overboard on the Claire is the best promo, too. Yeah, I can totally see why Summer is jealous, too, right? I mean, I will never have a nanny but the moment that my daughter starts liking somebody else's mom better than me like I know I'm gonna be sad um I don't think I'll be petty but I know I'll be sad and it'll hurt and I, I don't know maybe Claire is really meant to be over the top perfect so that we can understand Summer's position even better I don't know this is interesting from Diana who says, I know I've mentioned this in the past, but I think now is the perfect time to revisit the idea of bringing back Theo to the show, as many chatters have also expressed interest in. Previously, I had mentioned Kyle going to Paris and running into Theo. Theo lives in Paris and is running one of the Abbott companies there. I don't remember which one exactly, but if Kyle's going to Paris, the timing is perfect for this scenario. Kyle could run into Theo and reveal him, reveal to him all of his resentment toward his parents and how betrayed he feels after being fired from Jabot. Theo also expresses how he felt slighted after only receiving a pen in Dina's will. Together, Kyle and Theo could come up with a revenge plan as they both feel like they are owed much more to the family legacy. The timing is perfect for the character of Theo, as this storyline would fit in with what is currently taking place on the show. We've lost the character of Tucker, so Theo would be a great replacement. Wouldn't it be a slap in the face to Kyle if Summer ended up being romantically involved with Theo? Kyle could get a taste of his own medicine, and there's just so much potential storylines that would come out of bringing back Theo, including Tara's returning to the show. Her name has been mentioned a few times recently regarding Harrison's true paternity. I hope YNR listens to the viewers and decides to bring back these two characters. <sighs> okay, I'm convinced. <laughs> you convinced me. Now we just got to convince YNR because I, I really loved the character of Theo. Does anyone know what uh, Tyler Johnson is doing right now? Do we know if he is available? Mm, that'd be great. And him hooking up with Summer, that's good. Okay, new topic. Naomi says Sharon Case is such a great actor. She has a groggy, slightly off and shaky demeanor. She is making me worry that she's slipping back into the kleptomania and bipolar symptoms. 
I know in reality, mental health problems are common and the show does the storytelling in a careful way, but it's heartbreaking when we care so much for these fictional characters. I need a little escapism to navigate the real world. Oh, yeah, 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 she's so good. And Sue W says, I've always seen Sharon Collins, whatever her present name is, as a unicorn seemingly ageless while fashionably sexy compassionately wise but naive and always breathtakingly gorgeous the actress is effortlessly amazing what an asset she has been for y and r sharon collins whoever or sharon case both the epitome of hashtag every woman goals <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, it's, yes, yes, double yes, I can't say it better. Oh, how about this doozy from Daisy? Daisy says, I wonder what's really going on with Sharon. It could be the medication. The new medication might be ill affecting her or someone deliberately changed her medication to make her ill. It could also be that the past memories are coming up because she's lonely and her feelings come from those memories, especially with Phyllis Daniel's mother. But I also wonder if Sharon is starting to remember something about Cassie, which is different than the memories she always had. If I'm remembering correctly, Cassie was doing well and getting better and then she died. But maybe her death was a ruse by someone who thought she was Mariah. They believed they were rescuing her. And during that time, the person drugged Sharon with something that made her believe the lie, which was that Cassie had died, but in actuality, she was taken. Now Sharon's full memory is starting to return and the reality about Cassie being alive will come to her soon. Daisy, that would rock my face right off. If YNR was getting ready to twist this into a, oh wait, Cassie's actually still alive and now we've got uh Cameron Grimes constantly playing a double role that would be cool man what if Cassie never died how does that change things what would that do that would be amazing wow would they do that I think that'd be really cool if they had Cameron Grimes like just doing this double role all the time that would be so neat mm. Good comment. Okay, well, Connie says, hmm, Audra versus Phyllis would be a great rivalry. My money is on Phyllis. <laughs> and Sue W says, oh yeah, me too. Audra is small potatoes. She's just put her pretty face and sexy bod up against her paper tigers like Kyle and Noah, and I'm not convinced she's an actual force beyond posing to be reckoned with in the business world. I think Audra is totally out of Phyllis's league. Audra will alpha male her best against her, but Red will dominate and handily. <laughs> so good. Naomi says, I hadn't thought about Audra matched up with weak men before you make a good point Kyle and Noah are pretty boys but not much more Phyllis will give her a lesson on being a badass woman also Audra may just find out that Nate won't be manipulated and knows corporate shenanigans as learned from the Newman family oh so Audra versus Phyllis uh, most bets here are on Phyllis but Sherrod says I wouldn't be so sure about Audra not being a match for Phyllis Sally held her own against Phyllis and now Audra and Sally are friends Phyllis has no friends how about that? I think that right there, mm -mm, that's the poll. <laughs> Phyllis versus Audra, that's the poll. If these two ladies were to throw down, who do you think would come out on top? YRChat.com. Ooh, good question. Robin says, I love Audra and Nate. Not only are they super hot, but I think they will fall hard for each other. It was cruel of YNR to make us wait to see the romp. They better not skip to the after cuddle sex scene. <laughs> you know, I guess I was just so convinced, Robin, that it was, I mean, they said it's just for fun and part of me believed it. I'm not sure if I believe that it's going to ultimately develop into love, but in the meantime, this, they, this is, they are definitely eye candy. <laughs> 
<laughs> no doubt about it, eye candy. And speaking of eye candy, Tanya says, I really hope they will open up the rooftop bar. It's summer. I want to see the rooftop bar and feel the summer vibe. Yeah, man, it's July. Where is the rooftop bar? I ask you, who is in charge of this establishment? Is it Devon? Because, I don't know, let's let's see, let's tell, let him get right on that. Open up the rooftop bar for an engagement party with Abby next week. Oh, a fan can dream. <laughs> they used that uh, lookout point area again this week for Summer and Chance and Chelsea and Billy. So that must be, that's our, our alternate summer outdoor space. It's good, but dang, the, the rooftop bar, I mean, it's hard to beat that. that. That's gorgeous. How often do we have to say that before we're going to get it? Oh, well. Well, okay, I'm done. <laughs> it is your turn. I hand the floor over to you. Go to yrchat.com to leave your comments about anything that I've said, about anything you've seen, whatever you want to say. That's a good place to see it. To say it, don't forget to look at those photo captions too because again, I got in a couple of good funny photo captions and that picture of Sharon and the casket. Look through the weekly photo digest because there's always really good pictures of the show there too. Okay. In case you mix, miss something, I make sure to get those key moments right for you. <laughs> okay, everybody. I hope you have a good week. I love you and I will see you next Sunday. Bye.